Hi, born in Nova Scotia at West Goat Bell Pottery. Two kilns are going to be unpacked now, um, and maybe a third, but I think uh, I, I'll decide what to do without the length of the video later. Uh, a quick tease. Um, I decided to paint really elaborately some of those flower mugs that I had in a previous video a few weeks back. Um, and so I spent some time really painting. So here you go. This one is going through the kiln. It's a bisque firing it's going in now. But this is an underglaze painting using those brushes that I showed you. Um, so I'll have a whole bunch of these out of the kiln. And I'll do a kiln unloading when I do it. Because I've got lamps, large bowls, a whole bunch of things that uh, on that shelf back there. Uh, and um, it'll be a really nice kiln unloading. So uh, basically, just hold tight. It'll be coming soon. All right. So somebody wanted a mug with Tenmuku gold, and I can't find the email. So if somebody wants to re-email me about these mugs, uh, they wanted a Tenmuku gold mug. So, uh, okay, let's tilt you down so you can see what's happening. These glazes are all from Mastering Comb 6 Glaze book. And it's warm today, so I might be able to go outside and mix some more of my oatmeal. And when I do, I'm going to try two or three different recipes of oatmeal because maybe I don't have the best one. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm gonna try doing that, uh, especially since I have David Leach 2 recipe, um, which I had in high school in the 1970s, and it was a beautiful semi-matte white glaze, and I have to think if I had Il ilmenite and uh, some iron ochre to that, it'll be a beautiful oatmeal. But it was cone eight, so we'll see what it does at cone six. Okay, so speckled clay, number 455 from uh, pottery supply house. If you look at that as well, speckled clay on the bottom there. So that's a nice ball. Let's see if I can tilt this a bit up so you can see a bit more because when I angle them sometimes they go off the camera. But that's a really nice ball. Speckled clay does not stick to the new shells, although there's a little bit on there. Um, and I talked to uh, Jim Bailey um, and he recommends that you bat wash these shells uh, if you're actually doing anything um, with porcelain style clays. That means B-Mix 5 and any of those smooth white clays. Um, what do we have in here? This one is a Tenmuku Gold, but it the oatmeal seems to have really mixed into that one. Um, so that's interesting. It didn't show up. I usually just dip it on the top, but I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't do that to that one. It's got blue on the bottom blue on the inside, and then the oatmeal. I did fire this one back up to a little hotter, so I might drop down to uh, between cone five and six for the next firing. Everything looks good, um, but they run more obviously when you get a little hotter. So oh, look at that, it always runs a little bit down the handle. But it didn't come off the bottom, so that's nice. So hopefully the grinding issues are over. In that last kiln unloading, I did refire all the pieces that were run running onto the bottom and they all flattened out. So that's a good use of stilts. This is all bright blue, dark blue and oatmeal on these pieces. They run again, but not off the bottom. And here's the one that always runs. What did it do? Well, I got better with it. So I decided to dip a little less thickly on these and I've maintained that kind of color because it really has a nice flecking. Um, so basically, um, the, that's where it always runs and sticks to the kiln shelf or the stilt, and this time it didn't. So it's just about timing with this glaze. And this is the turquoise matte, which has done really well too. Oatmeal on the bottom, blue on the inside, no crack on this one. It's the sea foam that's been cracking for me. Um, and this one ran onto the shelf, so I'll have to grind that one. That's the green again. That's the one we are having issues with it running. Um, so that one needs to be fired a little lower in temperature, but I can grind that one down easily. 
but the stilt fired piece is there's the dark blue with oatmeal over the top and then I dip my bright blue over that. Dark blue again. I think seem to remember I packed this kill mostly with the same pieces on each level. And perfect, no running. So another one of those big blue balls. And it's in the speckle clay as well. And there's a little ring on the bottom, so it does need sanding a little bit on the bottom. So I think I'm gonna bat wash all these shelves. And that's what Jim Bailey told me to do. Because they don't warp at all. So you can bat wash one side and you don't have to flip the shelves over. Okay, these look really nice. This is dark blue on the bottom. They're the ones I make for the bakery next door. We have a bakery next door that's called the La Have Bakery, if you check it out online. And on uh, Facebook, I think they have a page too. That turned out very nice. So they're all turquoise matte. Turquoise matte. And it has a sheen to it, so it's slightly shiny. And that glaze, this one, is seafoam. And it didn't crack. Interesting. So, um, but it's very pretty. Tilt it down a little bit more so you can see a bit more so I don't go off the screen each time. This is the turquoise uh, no, blue, green, copper, red. You'll find that one on the internet somewhere. Just type in blue, green, copper, red in Pinterest or um, glaze, glazy.org, whatever it's called, and you'll probably find that one. And this speckled clay looks really nice. I dip blue over the bottom of these where the writing is for the bakery and then the turquoise and the oatmeal above. You can turn it into anything. Yep, the turquoise mat has worked nice on these. I'll skip through these quickly because they're all with the turquoise mat glaze, blue on the inside. Yeah, the stilts come right off the bottom easily, so the bottoms are glazed. Another, ah, uh, the sea foam ran a little bit too. So there's another one that's, but no cracks. That's interesting. These are small, tiny, use it as a bud vase if you want, but I make them as a lotion pump um, dispenser. So I've got some grinding to do on those two. So that means that glazed sea foam, I'll make a note on my chart, it shouldn't be glazed thick near the bottom because it runs. Bunch of glazes. There you go. And this shelf has already been bat washed, but it's also needing a second coat because it's already soaking into the, uh, the shelf itself. Look at that one. I did brush work on this one. So it's just brushed with, it's glazed with base coat of variegated blue and then uh, oatmeal over the two sides and then brushing other glazes just across randomly with a big Japanese paintbrush. Uh, and it's good on the bottom. Almost ran down. That one's almost touching the shelf. But that's a nice big ball. Then now I have a, an experimental glaze. Uh, which it's doing okay. It's the fake ash glaze. Um, and I would say that looks a little over fired. Uh, I did oatmeal on the inside, but I would say that one's a little overfired. So this kiln may have overfired a little bit. I don't know. I'll have to check it with a cone next time, because that co that glaze is supposed to go to cone six, but it's bubbling a little bit. It's not sharp, but it's actually bubbling a little bit. Turquoise again with oatmeal over the top and a lot of fluting in that one just to kind of you can see it better over just about this side. Yep, perfect on that one too. Blue, green, copper, red. Pinterest 
or look it up on, uh, where do I think the other site I go to is glazy.org, but blue, green, copper, red. There were some of these on the top shelf. This is the same blue, green, copper, red over oatmeal clay. Same again, this is perfect. These, these are from Toronto, Pottery Supply House, um, number 455. I love throwing it, it stands up well when you're pulling up. It's smooth, but it has a little tooth to it. Another ash glaze piece. I only did a few of these because I was wondering what it would do. And um, and it definitely has uh, the appearance of maybe over firing for that glaze. And here we go. This is a large matte green, matte turquoise, sorry, with a blue swipe and an oatmeal swipe. And a little slip trailing. You'll see those lines. I do that with slip trailers with glaze in them. And this is an experimental glaze that I have no idea how to ever get this again because I did it with all my glaze slops and um, basically added some cobalt to it uh, and this is what it turns out like. So it's pretty nice. It's baby blue. Yeah, I'm happy with that because that's all. I have, I have three and a half bucket, five gallon buckets of this glaze, but it's looking good. And here it is on the speckled clay. So baby blue. I kind of like that now. It's nice when you can use all your scrap glaze up. Scrap glaze is basically from all the wipe, sponge wiping pails that you use. And then you've got all that debris in the bottom. And I hate throwing anything out because of the toxicity of raw glaze going into the environment. Once it's fired, it's fine. These are all gonna get refired. I'll dip another glaze over them. Probably the oatmeal, actually. So I've got to mix them. This is the dark blue. More of the baby blue. See the stilts just fall right off. I mean, they basically are easy to take off. As long as you don't glaze the bottoms thick. Yeah, that's a nice speckled clay combination. Oh, I left a stilt pin. So to get that, figure out where to just put that down. All right, we will lose, come back to that afterwards. There it is. The pins will come out, but then you can put them right back in. Find out which way around it was. So you can and use a pair of pliers in case it's sharp. But you can put the pins back in. And two baby blue little mugs. These are like smaller than my usual mugs. All right. And lastly, another lotion pump, baby blue. Okay, so um, the fake ash glaze is on Pinterest, I think, as well, or glazy.org. Um, so be wary of that one. I'm testing it at the moment. Um, and it needs to be fired at a slightly lower temperature, or I'm going to add some silica to it to raise the firing temperature. So, um, uh, and that way, because uh, this was not an overfiring, everything else is perfect. So, and the blue and the variegated blue would have run like crazy if it had been overfired. So I wonder what's going on with that glaze. But anyway, um, that will go up to the next kiln. All right, this is the second kiln. Um, basically, glaze firing, Chrono 6, 15 minutes soak at 2225, uh, and then uh, one of 125 degrees slow cool to 1750 with a one hour soak again. All right, so this piece um, ran a little bit too. So this is confirming that I need to lower my bisque 
uh, sorry, my glaze temperature a little bit so I can stop this running. Um, and it's on stilts so I can grind that off easily. Um, but, um, but that was what we found in the other kiln. Um, with a few pieces, not all the pieces, there is a nice, let's get you looking at this. Here is a nice chip and dip in the blue, green, copper, red, speckled clay, 455 from Pottery Supply House with some yellow oatmeal on the rim. That's what gives it a nice summery look. Wow. Now it's like, what did I do here? Oh, speckled clay, okay. The outside always tells you a little bit better. Mouse gray over speckled clay. So that's that mouse brown in Mastering Cone 6 glazes. My uh, oatmeal was swiped over that way and on the inside too. And then my dark blue was, or bright blue was swept that way. Look at that little run right there. Didn't touch the kiln shell, still flat. And then on the inside, but look at this. This is because of that long, slow cool where the glazes kept running down um, for a long time. So, um, so I think I might try a faster cool from, instead of 125 down, I think I might slow the cool down, uh, sorry, faster the cool speed the cool up um, from 2225 down to about 2000 and then do a slow cool 2000 to 1750 and see if that reduces the amount of running but it's really nice the way that ran down and then almost touched the kiln shelf there here's another one of those black ones that ran down this is the licorice with blue over it, and it really does that luminous blue look and all that. But I will have to grind that off a little bit there. Here's the gray, which, um, let's see if I can get one of these to knock this off. And that ran a little bit down there too, although I think that'll still sit flat. Yeah, it does. So this is the speckle uh variegated blue with oatmeal over it and that's the one of the best examples i've seen of that mottling so that's uh, basically my oatmeal dipped over the top with the variegated blue from mastering cone six glazes and that sits flat this one ran too so this is why i always say with the spec the variegated blue it does tend to run we got away with it in the other kiln, but this one ran down a lot too. And there's a little bit needs grinding off there. But then most of my pieces, I do a different glaze on the bottom, which is why we don't get the running. And this one, I actually had it glazed right to the bottom. So I've got to stop doing that. These are all my Bright blue with dark blue and oatmeal swiped over them. So there's actually a set of four of these. This is left over from the bottle video that I did the other week. And that's the, the mouse gray has turned out beautiful in these video, in this firing. And then the oatmeal over the top of it. You can see that semi matte crystalline. That's a pretty bowl. And that's basically the bright blue, which tends to go green a bit over the top of the uh, speckled clay. And then my dark blue and my oatmeal swept over it that way. That's this, that one didn't run. Oh, it did a little bit there, but this is that variegated blue. It's always where the handle is. I've pointed that out before. This is that green. It's my apple green. I was going to give that recipe to somebody and I've forgotten who it was. Yeah, the green is running like it did in the other kill.
variegated blue again. Little runs down there too. I'll probably pry those upside down again. The green and the variegated blue need to be fired slightly lower temperature. This, oh, that's pretty. This is the matte turquoise. And then I dipped over the top of that. What did I dip over there? Oh, this is the one I tried the uh, Strontium Crystal Magic again. Now, does that feel okay? It's very matte. It's, it's an interesting texture. It's, it's not smooth. It's got a sort of a slight roughness. Not rough, um, but a matte feel to it. I did it over the top of the turquoise, so maybe I should try that underneath next time. But it's really pretty. Look at the way that ran. Lotion pumps, dispensers, oatmeal over dark blue, oatmeal over dark blue without the fluting. Well, that's still stuck on there. Sometimes they come off really easy and other times not. That's the dark green that I have with the oatmeal over the top. But it's always where the handle is, you get a little running knife to grind. So I'm just gonna speed the cool down in the next firing. I've got another firing ready to go, so we'll see if it works. And yet the blue, in all these blue ones, it's perfect. It's one of the things when you're experimenting with glaze layering over the top of each other, you're always going to get things that do like this, where you're just not sure what it's going to do. But I can fire these upside down, like I did before, and they'll be perfect anyway. Maybe I'll just do that. Ooh, this is pretty. This is the blue-green copper red over speckled clay with oatmeal swipe and a green swipe is my guess yeah it'd be my green which is the what i call my dark green but that's pretty kind of have a fairly ocean kind of look on that one so the all three bowls in this firing did well oh this is very nice wow what did i do here There's always something that's surprising, but this one I oatmeal glazed over the top, and then I think I did a little dark blue or variegated blue over the top of that. But look at that, that's very pretty. And again, same combination. I've got my oatmeal test on the go at the moment. So we'll be showing results of some new oatmeal glazes. Wow, this was very predictable. They all look very much the same. Fluted piece, oatmeal and variegated blue over bright blue. Running out of space. Uh, well, this is speckled clay with my oatmeal and I think variegated blue dipped over the top of it. Let's lift you up a bit. Again, dark, uh, sorry, is this dark blue? No, this is actually, I think it's bright blue. 
No, it's actually the dark blue. So this is my dark blue with oatmeal and actually the bright blue dipped over the top. Looks like I did this whole layer like this. Fairly successful combination there. Ooh look at that one. That's the, the variegated blue, but it didn't stick to the kiln shelf. You can see the bat wash on there. That gives it an, <laughs> that's funny. You would think that would have, because that's a regular kiln shelf with bat wash on under there. Anyway, I think I could leave that. It kind of looks nice. It looks like if it's a lotion dispenser that the, the water is just flowing down over the bottom. Happy accidents. Same again. Just sand it a little bit on the bottom. That's odd. It really looks like the thing, since it didn't stick to anything, it's a perfect piece to show the, how glazes run. Another one of the variegated blue ones. Another one of the green ones. So the green ones all have to be fired again upside down. It's just a little bit of a run, but it flattens out if you refire it. And two more, the last two in the firing. And there's the speckle grain. So variegated blue in Master and Cone 6 glazes definitely runs a lot. So be wary of it. Okay, that's the lot there. Um, so recap, the green runs. So I'm gonna lower the temperature a touch and then I'm gonna speed cool the kiln down to 2000 and then I'll slow cool to get the crystals to develop. And that's my next firing. Um, and I think uh, the so variegated blue and the green were the ones that were running in these set of firings. But there's also some amazing results that came out of this firing that I actually didn't expect that. I thought it would be interesting bright blue with very, uh, oatmeal and then with variegated blue over the top. Pretty amazing that one. So. Hi, this is the other kiln. It's a clear glaze, uh, cone six, uh, so transparent glaze and hand painted underglaze painting, just like the video I did with the mugs recently, but larger pieces obviously. Now, it's exciting. <laughs> Not what I was just describing. Kiln filler. There we go. This was a little kiln filler. I had room for it. It's nice to have a bunch of these. You just, you know, put your rings in or a little bit of relish or something, but we make a bunch of these just to go in the kiln. It, they take up no space and so they can just fill up a space. This is my Cone 6 Clear Glaze. Um, I've developed it. It does not craze. Um, having said that, you know, crazing can happen years later, so you can never guarantee it. But there you go, this is the, just like those mugs I painted, but I did a series of bowls and they're all different. This, as you can see, is about eight inches across. Um, I don't know if you call these lupins or what, but, um, but they're, uh, they could even be um, lavender. I mean, I just make these flowers up. They're done with the brushes, the Japanese style brushes, and I kind of let the brush make its mark when I'm painting. So they're very fluid. Hey, this is all experimental, so we do not know if they work well or not. Um, that one, 
is a lamp base. So I threw it just like I did my lotion pumps and vases. Excellent. Um, I also used my blue green copper red on the top um, just to kind of accent because I had that same sort of green in there, but also it kind of makes you think of the sky. So these should be nice when I get them all fitted with the electrics. They sell lamp kits at uh, Bailey Pottery Supply. I've always bought those uh, because it all comes complete. Okay, now I went more elaborate. You know, I've, I, I, my stencil work that I've just shown in a video is very popular. And I kind of, I've done it for 40 years nearly. So I'm enjoying doing these, they're a lot more loose. And the Japanese brush that I have, I've got so many of those brushes and they're all big, small, different sizes, different points. And, and I'll demonstrate maybe some bigger pieces like this because uh, I've got four large ones going through the kiln too. Um, but um, these are doing pretty nice as experimental pieces. So another one of those, make a nice pair. If anybody's interested in any of these pieces, just give me a shout, email or phone. It's at the end of the video. A nice little bit, yeah, soup bowl. A bit heavier. Bigger lamp base. Sometimes I make a bottom for these as well, so I might do that because that makes them even larger. But let me know what you think. These are all brand new for me. Bunch. Somebody? Okay, what do we have? All right, what do you think? Am I on a wild goose chase here? I enjoyed doing them. They've never been in my showroom. These are brand new pieces. The mugs are selling really well. I've got two styles of the mugs in the showroom now and they're doing really well. But here we've got some bowls. And I'm playing, there you go, poppies. So, uh, and this is, I can show you, this is the paintbrush. If I placed it down and just kind of went like that, it made that shape. So I'm really allowing the paintbrushes that I have to kind of dictate a little bit what I'm doing. But that's part of it. I, I enjoy the natural, quick, spontaneous part of it. There's another one. There is yellow in these too, but the yellow is faded out. Um, I'm not sure what that means, whether it just needs to have a much thicker coat, I guess. But you'll see, you can see a little bit of yellow, I hope, in there, but it has not shown up as far as the uh, intensity of the red. So maybe the red is a bit too intense and the yellow steps back a little bit. And then here's the purple and the red again. I think the red's a bit too intense, maybe. The purple is really nice, and there is some yellow in the purple. Let's see what we have down deep. There's two large bowls, so I've got one of them out there already. It's good to experiment when we, we're doing pottery for years, I just you know, like to keep changing, shaking things up a little bit. Yeah, these are pretty much like the ones you just saw, I think. So both of the big bowls are very much the same, like this. They're still a little hot to lift up. It says 122 degrees in the kiln pyrometer, but this feels a bit hotter than that, but it was on the bottom. This one without the the flower the leaf I like the leaf direction you know with the, the sweeping motion of the paintbrush but I think I have to change the flowers a little bit maybe the red flowers are just too much it's interesting because you don't know when you paint these under glazes a lot of them say they need three coats and others are supposed to be transparent some of them 
Oh, there's some new yellow and orange flowers underneath there as well. So, and that yellow showed up at least, but the, most of the yellow has faded out. I just ordered some new underglazes. And there's another little mixture of all of it, a yellow, some reds. First impressions on my part, you can make comments and let me know, is the red's a bit too strong. Hey, but maybe people like red. I like the lupin type flowers and the yellow ones. I wish I'd done a little bit more in the yellow. I don't think that was actually red. Maybe that was the deep neon orange that they had. Okay, all those um, runs and melts and sticks and stones and whatever. Um, I've refired them. Let's see. Surprise, surprise. What's the temperature? 120. Okay to open. All right. So this is what you do if you get all these runs. Let's get you over so I can see you better. I got a light on, so I'm trying not to block the light too. Um, okay, so I refired. I've got lots of things in here. Um, so oatmeal tests. Wow, what did, this one worked. Which one is this? This is David Leach 2 that I used to use in 1973 and I've changed it so that it will fire a cone 6 from cone 8. Oh wow, it is. And this does not use any tin or any titanium in it. Uh, and look how white it is. And it's silky shiny. First test. I'm not even going to change this. This worked perfectly. This is what I remember. I changed it to a, I just changed the felspars, basically. Uh, oh, wow. I'll have to look at the recipe, but this is great. Oh, right. My oatmeal has tin in it, 7%. And that's expensive. This has no tin in it, and it's white. So this is great. Wow, this one's great too. Look at that. It's got a slight creaminess, more yellow. And this is SMG. Which one was that? Um, I'll have to look at my buckets. SMG. Satin Matte Glaze. I got this one and modified it out of, uh, I think it was John Britt's book. I'll have to look it up in my recipe book. But that's great too. I should hold them closer and see if it's better. The light is, I'm not sure if you can get it just right, but it, it's satin matte. Both of these are look, they look perfect. That's why I was saying with my oatmeal glaze, it may not be the best one. Oh my God, look at that. Can you see this in the light? Oh, wow. I now have eight oatmeals. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. What one was this? This is the Folk Art White. I got this one. Where did I find this one? Folk Art White. I'll have to look in my recipe book. Um, but that's intense. That is a keeper for sure. So three out of three. This one is a great white glaze, Val Cushing White. Look at that. It's a, this one is beautiful too. I could make this into oatmeal by adding my iron ochre, which is what I did to this one. Okay, so we've got four new, and look, that none of them ran. I mean, these are perfect straight off. But the David Leach white satin is great because it's got the semi-matte quality without any titanium. This is just a glaze, and it also has a shine to it. Feels very smooth, so my guess is this one will be fine. 
the way it is. I don't need to add any tint to it at all. And my over the top of gloss glazes, I'm hoping that's my next series of tests. So I'm going to put it over my Tenmaku Gold and over my Bright Blue and over my Turquoise to see how each of these works. So I'm going to make some test pieces today. That in itself makes this a successful firing, but look what we did here. Okay, these are all the ones where the bottom was bubbly and it's flat. So that's firing, there's the stilt inside, if you can see it. So fire with the stilt inside and basically sit it on some props so your rim doesn't touch the actual kiln shelf. And that's how you get them to, from what was a you know, a big grinding job with these if I had to do it. Um, but refiring them on stilts works better because the bottom, no grinding marks at all and all that. So and let's see if I can get the stilt out because that's usually you just have to tap it and it falls right out. There you go. No stilt inside. And then basically if you can find a drill grinding thing, just kind of touch each one of those three sharp points and that'll blunt them. Same again, and even the writing showing up. This, this had run right into the writing before, and you can now read the writing. Perfect. So let's see if I can get that stilt out. Yep. So another success. And all of these basically had run and made the bottom bubbly. Not bubbly, but you know what I mean is like lumpy and all that. And now they're all perfect. This one you can see ran to the rim and gave me a little bump right on the rim. But it's on the opposite side of where people will drink out of, unless they're left handed. But that's the variegated blue, which is really bad for running. Now the profile on this is I fired it to 2205 with a 20 minute soak and then speed cooled it down to 1750, which means let it cool naturally. Didn't slow the cool down at all. And then soak for an hour at 1750. And that one did good too. See, they didn't run to the rim except for that one, but they flattened out on the bottom. So this kiln is actually solving several problems, this firing. Another flat one on the bottom, stilts out, no running on the rim. This is a major, I've been meaning to basically try and make these oatmeals for a while because people have been asking and I wanted to see because I just had an oatmeal. I mean, who knows if it was a good one or not, but now I've got four that look like they're as good or better than my oatmeal. So no running on the rims, so it was timed just right, totally flat on the bottom, without any grinding. Perfect. The nicest word in the English language. All right. Look, the, the crystals are even more than the first firing. So I'm a little surprised that we don't have any glaze bubbles, but I lowered the temperature a full cone. If I'd gone to the same cone, I'm sure I'd have had blistering and bubbles. I've done a lot of firings. I go through cycles a couple of weeks. I'm just starting a couple of weeks of throwing, building inventory, and then basically, but also planting seeds, it's spring. It's a pretty, oh, that's a nice, oh, chip and dips. That's why I have a lot of chip and dips in here. No. Okay, I think we, this is the nicest of all these kill loads. Okay, there's a really nice chip and dip with my green glaze. I keep, and I'll take a picture of my uh, recipe. It's called Maggie Jerk Green, because I got it from a lady called Maggie Jerk who lived in Nova Scotia here. Very pretty. And now, what did we do with these? These are the refires of the fake ash uh, and this worked perfectly too. I dipped my oatmeal like this in my oatmeal 
over the top of the fake ash, which wasn't doing too good. It had blistered a bit, and this now looks better. Really nice. So that worked too. So we sold the fake ash. So when I do the fake ash, it looks like I have to double dip with the oatmeal over the top if I want it to work the way it is. But I am going to try raising its temperature by putting some more silica in it. Any more fake ash? Nope. Then we have a glaze I don't use very often. I call it rutile green. Copper carbonate with some rutile in it. I'd have to look what else is in the recipe. It's very pretty though. I'll try and hold them in the light. Very pretty. I did, I remember doing these all, the same glazes on each piece on each level. And there's another interesting test here coming up. Let's see if I can hold you over there. I fired these two pieces upside down on their rims, their lotion dispensers. I, I said this earlier in the video um, because they had run uh, over the bottom um, and uh, I wanted to see whether I could get that run to go. You saw it earlier in the video. Uh, without sticking to the kiln shelf, but we'll see what it is. Let's lift that up again. Yep, it didn't stick to the kiln shelf. And these are lotion pumps, so they're going to have a plastic cap over this area here. So what I did, because they had run all the way, big kind of over the bottom here, um, I fired it upside down to get that run to melt in, and you can see from the melt, it's gone all the way back in without going down to the kiln shelf. But now I can stick the plastic stopper over there to actually uh, save these pieces too. And the same with this one. Yep, worked again. This is the one that had, this one did, these shells are great because they don't let anything stick to them. Um, and I can just light sandpaper that and stick the plastic cap off. And this is the one that had the glaze spread out all over. It was really white. And it melted. You can see how it melts down that way. Uh, so you've got that line, um, but basically bottom is now perfect, the top is a little rough, and I'm going to stick my little plastic lotion cap over that, and that'll be gone. So, um, so that was a complete save as well. So then we've got some more of these Rutile Green. These are actually really pretty, I don't use this glaze very often. There we go. Of course, with the fluting, it always makes glaze look really pretty. So we have a set of these. Okay, another chip and dip. That's how I did this all the way down. With variegated blue. I'm not sure if you just heard that, but my cat is scampering around all over the place. He's an old man. He's 14 years old, and he's a kitten right here in the studio. It's like thunder feet all the way across the upper floor here. This fake ash really does look nice with the oatmeal over it. You can see how it runs down. But these were terrible after the last firing, now they're good. That's another fake ash. And then we have a whole bunch of the what did I do to the... Oh, that's another one of the Rutar Green with the oatmeal over it. This one is my... Oh, look, there's one that ran. This is the Apple Green again. So even at a lower cone where the handle is, it ran all the way down and then I'll grind that a little bit. That won't be bad at all. Um, but there's some nice run marks on that. So I had Apple Green here with something dipped over the top. And the way it did that pattern, like a crown all the way down but uh, but the apple green definitely runs i'm going to try that and see what that apple green uh, and it's the same again on this one 
just a little bit right at the handle where it runs a little bit more, but the rest is fine. So these are saveable just by grinding. The only way around that is for me to dip less time in the bucket. But the, the, it's a very pretty apple green. And then I think I just do my oatmeal over the top. Yep, that one did it too. So all of these need, I'm not going to refi these because I can grind off that one little thing. Just lift you up a bit because I'm missing you sometimes. I remember what I did, I did Tenmiku Gold on the one underneath here. So another one of those, that's the apple green with the oatmeal. So we resolved it by refiring upside down, but if it's just one drip, a cone five, 2205 is literally about cone five. Um, so basically, it's the apple green still runs a little bit of cone five. And it is supposed to be a cone six glaze, so I'm wondering what happened there. Oh, that one. Same again, always right where the handle is, get that little run, grind it off. But you should be able to get this glaze without that. I could add a little silica to this glaze and that will probably get rid of the run. It's pretty. My bright blue, dark blue, no variegated blue. So bright blue first and variegated blue and oatmeal swipes. Blue is very popular around here because we're on the ocean. And another fake ash, which is really pretty with the blue on the bottom. So that's, was, this oatmeal over fake ash works great. I should write that one down in my book. Got a few of the turquoise ones with the oatmeal on the top. Another oatmeal over the turquoise, but done the other way around because this was an order for somebody who's got their names on it. So I had to dip from what top from one and not bottom from the other for that couple. That way they can tell their mugs more. And this is the best I've seen this. Look at that. I have a series of these out. Somebody wanted a Tenmaku gold mug. So if you see one of these, you should just email me again because I lost your email. When they all did it. It's perfect. So when I do this, I'm going to write this down, this firing schedule for Tenmiku Gold here. Because that oatmeal is perfect. If I go to cone 6, it melts right into the glaze. Look at that. It's the same on every piece. Just perfect. I just have to grind that one a little bit. There's a little bit of glaze there. And there's another three. So this behaved perfectly in this firing schedule. This is a long video, probably an hour, um, but a lot of information in here. Um, press subscribe. Uh, I have lots of videos now on YouTube and uh, thumbs up, whatever. I don't know what that does. I'm not monetizing this channel um, because I, you know, I'm fine. I don't need to do that. Um, so basically this is supposed to be for educational purposes. Um, and I hope that everybody has lots of fun playing with pottery. I mean, what a time to be doing pottery anyway we're so lucky we have it uh, anyway this is Vaughan Smith in westcoatbeltpottery.ca in Nova Scotia Canada all right so have fun and enjoy yourself and stay safe